Hi friends, it's Alex. Welcome to the Guiding Creatives YouTube channel. I usually give tips and tricks for freelancers and creatives to thrive in the gig economy, but today we're gonna to focus on the multi-passionate because I get a lot of questions and this is a struggle for a lot of multi-passionate people and that's boredom. So we're gonna talk about how to handle it. We're gonna talk about how not to act on it too swiftly, but also how you can take action on it when it's needed. Boredom plays a huge role in multi-passionates, especially in their career path. I get so bored at tedious jobs to the point where it hurts. It just hurts my soul. I get so cranky, like it's just not for me. When you're multi-passionate, unless you're appeasing all of your passions, you're probably going to get bored with whatever you're doing. You have multiple passions. You have multiple things that you want to be doing. If one of those areas are not fulfilled, you will get bored with another. That is common practice. It's not a issue. It's not anything wrong with you. It's normal when you're multi-passionate. What comes with being bored is restlessness. You know, you start to get restless in your situation because you have curiosity and you have passion that's driving you. So although these are negative emotions you're feeling, the reason you're feeling them is a positive. So take that with you. The one obvious tip that we're gonna get out of the way first, because there's no point to dwell on it, is if you're really, really, really bored in your career, you have got to find a way to either make time for a hobby that fulfills that passion of yours, or you need to change careers. I know a lot of people don't wanna hear that and it's easier said than done, but I have to tell you that because as a multi-passionate person, if your job is taking up all of your time so you can't have a hobby, but it's also taking up all of your time in a career that you're not passionate about, or it's not giving you time or energy for the second passion, you need to make moves. This is your life, you have to take some control over it. However, I am going to give you a caution and a pro tip here. Boredom does not always mean you have to act on it because even when I'm multi-passionate, part of that means I'm really, really into freelancing right now, but my environmental self is really creeping up. And that happens. I had a little bit of a burnout with my environmental work and I got bored of it and it got a little bit draining. So instead of just pausing it or, you know, kind of lowering it down, I was totally not doing it for a while, which is ridiculous for me. Like that is part of my life. I'm never going to get back that time. So you don't want to abandon something completely because you're bored with it. You want to get to one, the deeper rooter of why you're bored, but you can press pause, but don't throw anything out. You know, don't burn bridges, press pause and focus on the more interesting passion. It's like work. If you can figure out a way to fit your other passions in, if you haven't done all the work to see if it can fit, don't just quit and throw everything out, you know? Try to figure things out first. But what I'm saying to you is, if there's absolutely no way to please all of your passions in your current career field, you might need to move. When it comes to boredom, don't fight it, but also don't trust it 100%. You have to dig deeper. Something you can do, which even means not leaving the job you're in, maybe this has nothing to do with you infusing your new passion, you just need to fight the boredom. And how you can do that is you mix something up. When I get really bored from doing the same audit over and over, I start looking for clients who have interesting niches or interesting brands or topics or themes. If you had the flexibility to take on new different projects, that's something you can do. If you're even further limited from that, you can actually just mix it up. Mix up the way you work. Maybe you take your work outside. Maybe you try a new template style. Maybe you look for a new font, you know? These little things will feed your multi-passionate brain. Don't underestimate the power of just getting a little bit creative because what the multi-passionate brain doesn't want you to do is to focus on the one thing and do it over and over and over and over. If there's no opening for newness, it's never going to feel like it's gonna be fulfilled. So even changing up your routine, changing up what you're doing a little bit, opening that door for opportunity, it's gonna help you as a multi-passionate person. Then you can take it even further than that and get creative. How can you infuse this new passion? What if it's not just you need to unlock your creativity a little bit? Maybe you are a math teacher, but you really wanna start bringing in the environment. How can you bring it in? How can you mold those two together? If you have enough ownership over your job or the way you work, or you have a good relationship with your team and your boss and you can bring this up, maybe you bring nature into it. Maybe you mold the two together. It's not that far of a stretch. You can talk about tree rings. You can talk about carbon dating. There are these things that use math in nature and doing that research itself will feed the multi-passionate brain that will feed you as a multi-passionate person. 
So once you feed that and then you present it to other people, you'll also discover one, if other people are benefiting from learning this way because being multi-passionate also brings in this new opportunity to just do things differently. But you're also gonna realize, is this enough? Is this feeding? Do you need a career change or do you need to keep it separate? Because something else we should really cover as being multi-passionate people, Sometimes you need to mold your passions together and sometimes you just need to keep them as separate projects and feed them all. It kind of depends on how you work and how you operate, but it also depends on your passions. Something you can do in any situation is learn. If you cannot do anything to manipulate your career path right now, but you wanna embrace another passion, while you're doing your tedious work and doing your deep work, listen to a podcast about the other passion. Start reading a book on the bus. Start listening to an audiobook. Bring in this passion in the form of learning it. So if you cannot do it, learn about it because that also gives you hope. As you're stuck in this tedious, boring job or boring situation that may be temporary or maybe you're always gonna be bored with it, you are learning and you are preparing for that moment that you can finally break free of it. That is something I did when I was in my oil and gas job. Do not underestimate it. And something that I've learned recently with the Guiding Craves community, which I think is a very powerful tool, and I'm so obsessed with knowledge transfer, I will always sing it to the hills, knowledge transfer and storytelling is everything. If you're bored of doing something, try showing it. Okay, let me explain. If you are bored of doing something over and over again, try teaching it. This in a field can mean maybe you ask your boss to attend a conference. Maybe you want to train somebody. Maybe you want to do something that's related to showing people how to do it. It could be virtual, it could be in person. If you're limited to that, when it comes to your hobbies, if you know listening to this stuff is not interesting, maybe you just start writing notes as if you're going to create a course. You're gonna create a YouTube video one day. Start teaching what you know, recording what you know, whether that be in a book, whether that be a voice note, whether that be a storyboard, a drawing, a journal, a video, start teaching. It doesn't have to go out to the world right away, but this is knowledge transfer. If somebody finds this camera tomorrow, you're gonna learn something. If I post this video tomorrow, you're gonna learn something. If you're bored of showing, start teaching. And I have to be honest, I have not been bored in a long time. And although I'm going to do a podcast episode next week about the power of boredom, because we do need to be bored sometimes, you really need to learn to differentiate when you need to take action and when you need to pivot, when you need to just feed that other passion of yours. Because the truth is there's not enough hours in the day. If you have 24 different passions and you only have an hour for each and you have to eat and sleep and live and pay the bills, you know you're not gonna do it. So even if you only have two or three passions, you can already see how that time gets eat up. Don't take boredom as a sign that you have to jump ship. Sometimes boredom is also saying mix it up. You know, mix up how you work, mix up how you do things, mix up how you mold things together. But the truth is, is boredom is also going to teach you what you need to succeed in your happiness and in your career and how you're gonna be fulfilled. Because if you're multi-passionate, that doesn't go away. That's something you really need to learn is that being a multi-passionate person, that doesn't go away. You can kick it to the curb as much as you want. It's always gonna creep back up on you. So when you do all these steps, you can start to learn what actually feeds you and fulfills you and what is just a distraction. And then you can take the true action that you're gonna need to as a multi-passionate person. If you ever need advice or you have a specific question about your career path and being multi-passionate, I do one-on-ones, you can message me. And sometimes if you ask me a question and I think other people can benefit from it, I'll just make a YouTube video for free to for everybody so that you can learn and you can share and we can grow together because that's what this is all about. It's a community.